wonderful people hanging out here at Barbara's Cocktail Lounge tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sergi. Bright moment. You know, someone says, how in the heck can you be a pastor to the jazz musicians when you don't know anything about music? You don't know much about jazz. I mean, how can they relate to you, you know, when you talk to different languages? I said, well, I'm a pastor. And we all have needs for pastors. We all have need for that kind of fellowship and that kind of relationship. The other thing, I had worked very hard in Holland. No, not you, taking any kind I of know. social break. Everything was running here and there and all business. But and it was I just got too back, much, right? It was really too much. I had to slow down. Right. So I had to remain in the hospital for five days. T tell there. me a little bit about the, the hospital. Uh, when I see him, I said, oh, goodness, I know everything is going to be beautiful. Uh, yeah, I don't get a feeling that, uh-oh, here he comes. I might hide my vodka and grapefruit juice. But I never felt that way. He's for real. That's what I can say. He's for real. You can touch him, too. But remember you, me telling you how depressed I was when I had gotten back, naturally right. with no money, right. and all upset and nervous because I didn't know what I was going to do next after I had finished my engagement with Barbara. Yeah. I remember that, yes. But things are uh, Much beginning better to work because out. We have a spiritual contact that's even deeper than words. Right. I went and I made, I had communion with you. I remember, you I remember. Up at the new office. Well, sometimes you don't have to say much, do you? No. You know, just so the fact that, that uh, we're together and we're present means a great deal. I'm very proud, in the right sense, to be a pastor. I wear my collar. I'm just a little pot-bellied old German-looking pastor. You know, that's all I am. I'm not a musician. I'm sad about that, but... Uh, it helps me to get along with a musician because I'm a threat to no one. I'm not a musician to the jazz community. I'm a pastor to the jazz community. Okay. All right, well, then I'll see you tomorrow morning about 10 o'clock here. Huh? Uh, thank you very much. Bye-bye. John, without, uh, you know, revealing any, any personal stuff, could you tell us about the nature of that call? Well, this person just called me and said that uh, she and her husband were having uh, difficulties. Uh, Evidently, it has to do with uh, areas of responsibilities, and uh, she's mentioned that uh, certainly she's at fault, but that he is also at fault as a two-way street. And she asked me if there'd be someone that she could be directed to, and I said, well, before I would do that, I would like to sit down and talk with both of you uh, so that I'm not shooting in the dark and say, hey, you, should <coughs> you should go to this person or that person. And after I talk with them, I have an appointment tomorrow morning at uh, 10 o'clock here with them. Then I'll see where they are, and as far as I can ascertain what their needs may be, and then I may suggest that they go to a certain marriage counselor. Or we might be able to uh, garner enough at that particular time that we might meet again. Um. children became members of this congregation and I suggested at that time that uh, Frank could put his genius to work and perhaps write a service an Advent service now Advent is the coming of the Lord so he divided this into these four parts which I think are very important in thinking about the coming of the Lord and the scripture readings and all tie in prophecy longing penitence and preparation for the coming of Jesus and the thing to me that was so astonishing was the fact that I talked to Frank a little bit about Advent and the meaning of Advent and what it meant to me and gave him some materials and then he took the few materials that I gave him and he designed the entire service hey you pimp man get off the corner and get into your soul Seek yourself some righteousness instead of a new hole. Trade in that Cadillac for a glory round bound chariot with lots fewer notes. Much better for the area. Hey, you better get hip to it. The man's coming. 
Remember the prophecy? Change your life. Work to end all trouble and strife. Get hip to it. There's a man coming around to check you out. band I ever heard was Duke Ellington's. I think it was in 33. And I remember standing in front of the band all night long just listening to this fantastic band, which really hooked me. So when I came to New York City in 1956 as the pastor of Advent Lutheran Church at Broadway and 93rd Street, I'd go out to listen to the musicians that I knew, which meant I got to know them a little better and met some other musicians. Then one night, one of the musicians came to me, said he had a problem. We talked about it. And this began to happen more and more frequently. So I thought that perhaps part of my work as a pastor could be to the jazz community. So eventually, after much arguing and debating, the Board of American Missions of our church gave me a full-time call as pastor to the jazz community in New York City. A new call, but with no church and no home. Well, I formed a committee of jazz people and other friends, like Joe Newman and Howard McGee and Pastor Glenn Pearson, and also Ruth Ellington, Duke's sister. And they helped me decide what direction the jazz ministry should uh, take. And Ralph Peterson, who was my present senior pastor, was chairman of our committee. And then Ralph Peterson got a call to come to St. Peter's Lutheran Church. And he said to me, John, if I go there, will you uh, come along with me with your ministry? And I said, yeah, man. I said, I'm ready to have a home. You know, I'd asked if jazz ministry could come to St. Peter's, and I was told on the doors, step, you know, steps of the church, go to hell. <laughs> and I said, what do you mean? He said, go to hell. Jigaboos can worship at 11 o'clock like the rest of us. And uh, I said, well, the only place for, you know, segregated services is hell, and you can go to hell. That's where you belong. And that was it. has a message to bring to the church so that it's not only a ministry to them it's a ministry of the musician to the church and that we appreciate the great contribution that they give us to make our worship service in depth and have given more depth that goes beyond color and goes beyond nationality because of this fantastic music which has come from the, the very core of people but when I was considered for St. Peter's, I said, well, there's no way they're going to get me without getting John Genzel. It took them by surprise, but I think they were so flabbergasted. I think the only thing I agreed to do was not let uh, jazz appear in the main body of the church until it could come into the parish house. Remember we, I remember we got those that. curtains yeah, it fixed up and I said, well, this is all right for us. Now, if I had just been out of seminary, I would have been very hurt to look. If it's good enough for the basement, it's good enough for the upper room, you know. Yes. But uh, I said, fine. And, and pretty soon, after Billy Strayhorn's funeral, we went That's upstairs right. and we just stayed. <clears throat> and then the church council said, well, it's perfectly all right. And it's worked out very nice. And to me, the thrill of it is not only to work with you, but the very fact that we have a marvelous congregation and that they were good enough to say, look, instead of you being a board missionary and just, in a sense, holding your services here, we'd like you to be part of us. And so they called me as uh, an associate pastor.
So I was very, very conscious of the fact that the wonderful, conservative, old German background congregation at St. Peter wasn't just exactly ready to receive a jazz pastor to have the jazz ministry come there. I think it had to do probably with the black people as well as the, the music of jazz, you know, the, the, the secular music and devil music and not exactly church music. And so it took quite a while for people slowly to realize that to use one particular standard of music would be going against everything that Duke Ellington said, where he said you're using one category to express a universal principle. special feelings about what I'm playing, except the acoustics were great. I don't have any, that's what I, I have my eyes shut. Is this audience any different from uh... They were very, very attentive and uh, responsive. Sometimes you get that in a nightclub or a regular concert, and sometimes you don't. How do you feel about jazz in churches in general? Well, I think it probably goes back to partly some of the things that John said earlier about uh, helping to educate people to their own uh, to their own music, really, I, I think it probably is a good thing in that way, especially. And much of jazz, of course, uh, came from the spirituals too, the blues and the spirituals, and a lot of the feeling yeah. uh, is here. So it's a kind of a uh, institution has divorced it, but. There really has never been a divorce, just been a separation. We're trying to get the two together again. I think that's a good point because jazz music was really in the churches to start. Absolutely. seems that God has always pushes me off a little bit off center. I was a chaplain in the Navy. Now that's a special ministry. That being a chaplain in the Navy, you're, you're dealing with a special group of people who happen to be in the armed forces, right? Oh yeah, incidentally, even as a chaplain, I was a little out uh, left field because I had a wrestling stable and had a whole group of wrestlers. I had the best show on the island. <laughs> 